Hey everybody, how's it going? Travel Man Dan here, and welcome to today's episode of Reading Man Dan. We're continuing on with the December 2020 Vlogmas as I read to you today the 23rd episode in this series. And today is going to be so much fun. I'm reading one of my favorite books, Ladies and Gentlemen, Children Around the World. Today we're going to be reading Disney's The Muppet Christmas Carol. Yes! Alright, so sit back, relax, and get ready for an awesome show. Let's go! Hey, thanks for stopping by and checking out today's episode. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there. Ring the notifications bell so you're notified when new episodes come out each and every week. Before we get started, I'd like to go ahead and dedicate this episode to a good friend of mine, AJ Ricciardi. And man, I'll tell you what, a few years ago, me and AJ were both living in Shanghai, China. And it was the first time for me that I was unable to go home for the Christmas holiday. For him, I'm sure he was disappointed as well. I know it had been a very long time and maybe the first time also for him that he wasn't able to spend the Christmas holiday with his family. And for us being Italian Americans, it's everything. It's not, hey, how you doing? I forget about it. It's more about family, food, and just being together for the Christmas holiday. So instead, we went ahead and we ordered a bunch of Chinese food and we sat in my apartment up in Shanghai. I think it was the 36th floor and we watched Disney's The Muppet Christmas Carol and I always have a fond memory of sitting there being as sad as it was and such a sombering time we made the best of it and every time I either see the movie or read this book I think of AJ and I think of that Christmas where we chilled out in my apartment in Shanghai and we watched this so I dedicate this book to you AJ I want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas this holiday season I hope you're enjoying yourself up in Northern California and uh, well Always fun to read The Muppet Christmas Carol or watch it. So let's get started. Disney's The Muppet Christmas Carol. The Muppet Christmas Carol, the illustrated holiday classic, written by Brooke Vitale, illustrated by Luke Flowers. Hello, welcome to The Muppet Christmas Carol. My name is Charles Dickens, and I am Rizzle the Rat. Hey, wait a second. You're not Charles Dickens. I am, too. I know the story of a Christmas carol like the back of my hand. Prove it. There's a little mole on my thumb, and uh, not your hand. Tell us the story. The Marleys were dead to begin with, as dead as a door now. In life, the Marleys had been business partners with a man named Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. All right, we can see a little bit into the world of Jim Henson and that fun Muppety village right there. Look at that. <laughs> All the good characters. And over here, we got Gonzo. And Gonzo is claiming that he is Charles Dickens. He's with Rizzo the Rat. He is absolutely not believing him. He says, look, just tell us the story, all right? So Gonzo is now going to get started with Charles Dickens' famous story, A Christmas Carol. All right, let's find out who this Ebenezer Scrooge is. Scrooge was cold, greedy, and unkind. His only care in life was making money. Inside his office, Scrooge's bookkeepers shivered. <laughs> they needed more coal for their fire. But Scrooge was not in a giving mood, not even on Christmas Eve. For others, Christmas was a time of joy, laughter, and charity. Yet Scrooge hated the holiday. Christmas by humbug. After Scrooge left his office for the evening, the mood brightened. His clerk, Bob Cratchit, and the bookkeepers merrily closed up the shop. They were all looking forward to the Christmas holiday. That's the way to do it. All right. All right, so let's take a look. There's Ebenezer Scrooge, and he is a grumpy man. He's like, bah humbug, all right? He doesn't want to give any more coal. He doesn't care who's cold. And we can see Bob Cratchit in the background. He just doesn't understand. All his little bookkeepers are cold. And over here, he has left the building. And look at that. 
Bob Cratchit and all the other bookkeepers, they're celebrating, they're having a good time, they're singing, they're cleaning up, and it looks like, well, the Christmas holiday has now begun. Outside, the streets were filled with the joy of the season. The Penguins were hosting their annual figure skating party. Bob had to give it a try. After a turn on the ice, Bob bid goodnight to the Penguins. Looking up at the moon, he smiled. It was time to go home to his family. All right, let's take a look. So, Bob Cratchit, he's heading on his way home. And who does he run into? The Penguins. And they have their annual ice skating party. All right, check it out. Bob hops in. He gives it a try. He's pretty good. Then it's time to go home. And look at that. Bob looks up at the moon and look at that beautiful moon. He's reminiscing. He's thinking, well, it's time to go home and spend time with my family. That's pretty awesome. First, he has a little workout on the ice. Then he looks up at the moon. Wow. He has all that good feeling that you have around the holidays and around Christmas time, bursting in his heart knowing that he's going home to see his family. Let's find out what happens. Elsewhere in the city, Scrooge approached his own home, which had once belonged to his partners, Jacob and Robert Marley. Now, once again, I must ask you to remember that the Marleys were dead. That one thing you must remember or nothing that follows will seem wondrous. As Scrooge bent to open his door, a cold wind began to blow. Suddenly, the door knocker transformed into the face of Jacob Marley. <gasps> Scrooge cried out in shock, Ah! But when he looked again, the knocker had returned to normal. <gasps> Shaken, Scrooge went inside. He dressed for bed and settled down next to the fire certain he had simply imagined the face of his departed partner. As Scrooge sat staring into the flames, the fire went out, and the spirits of Jacob and Robert Marley appeared. <gasps> oh, wow. Okay, so take a look, guys. Scrooge is going home, and all of a sudden, his door knocker right there, you can see it's a bit of a lion face. It turns into his old departed partner. And Scrooge is like, ah, can't believe it. But then it goes back to its normal face. Then we see over here, Ebenezer Scrooge has settled into his pajamas and he's staring at the fire when all of a sudden everything goes dark. And there, appearing in the darkness, is Robert and Jacob Marley, the ghosts of them. Oh no, what is going on? Scrooge is terrified. Let's find out what these ghosts want and what they have to say. The Marleys showed Scrooge the chains they earned through their many acts of greed in life. As the Marleys howled and danced about the room, they issued Scrooge a warning. If Scrooge did not change his ways, he would end up like them. The Marleys told Scrooge that he would be haunted by three spirits. Only with the help of these spirits could he change his fate. Then, with a final rattle of their chains, the Marleys vanished. Whoa, okay, that's some heavy stuff right there. All right, look at Scrooge. Can't believe it, right? He was just settled in with his PJs, gonna take the night off and relax. Who knows what he's having to drink. And then here comes Jacob and Robert Marley and they show him these chains. They're bounded to chains forever because of their acts of greed throughout their life and their existence. Now they have to, well, live the rest of eternity locked and shackled in these chains and they issue Scrooge a warning they say look if you don't change your ways you're gonna be just like us you're gonna have these chains these chains are gonna be locked to you forever you're gonna be visited by three ghosts and well if you listen to them it could change your fate let's find out what these three ghosts have to say The Marley's visit left Scrooge deeply unsettled. He lit a candle to ward off the darkness and got into bed. When the clock chimed one, Scrooge awoke to a bright light filling his room. He drew back his bed curtains. Floating by his bed was a childlike spirit. I am the ghost of Christmas past. The spirit told Scrooge, 
that she had come to save him from the Marley's terrible fate. She offered Scrooge her hand and gestured to the world outside, his suddenly open window. Scrooge hesitated to leap into thin air, but the spirit assured him that he would be safe. He took her hand, and they flew out the window and into the past. <gasps> what? Wow. Hello, London. Goodbye, lunch. All right, let's take a look. We see right here Scrooge, and he's awakened. Okay, there's a shining bright light, and he opens those little curtains to his bed, and who does he see? The ghost of Christmas past. <gasps> he can't believe it. And the ghost is like, come on, jump out this window. Come with me. Scrooge is hesitant. He's not going to go jump out of a window, but she assures him that he's going to be okay. Look who else came along for the ride. <laughs> we have Gonzo and Rizzo, and they are flying through the night air of London, and they can't believe what is going on. Scrooge is like, what? I'm flying into the past. Let's find out where they go. Soon they arrived at Scrooge's childhood. Scrooge recognized the place at once. It was his old school, and there was his younger self. It was Christmas Eve here, too. All around, happy children were preparing to go home for the holiday. But young Scrooge had nowhere to go, no family to return to. He had to spend the holiday at school, alone. Rats don't understand these things. You were never a lonely child. I had 1,274 brothers and sisters. <laughs> Rizzo. Time moved forward, and Scrooge found himself back in London. Once again, it was Christmas Eve, and the lamplighters were plying their trade. Hey, light the lamp and not the rat. Light the lamp, not the rat. <laughs> the spirit had brought Scrooge to the site of his first job. Old Fozzywig's Rubber Chicken Factory. Light and laughter poured from the building. It's the Fozzywig's annual Christmas party, Scrooge exclaimed. <gasps> okay, let's take a look. We got a lot of things going on here. First, the ghost of Christmas past takes Scrooge back to his old school. And you can see Scrooge right here. Okay, he sees all the other kids and they're all happy. They're all excited about the Christmas holiday. They're going to go home, spend time with their family. But he has to spend time with his teacher alone at school because he's got no family to go home to. Pretty sad. You can see it on his face right there. He looks like it right there. He's very sad. But then down here, <laughs> we got Rizzo and Gonzo talking about uh, family. And over here, check that out. Now they're back over at Old Fozzy Wigs, the rubber chicken factory. And it is the annual Christmas party. And of course, Gonzo and Rizzo are lighting the lamp over here. So let's find out what happens at this old Fozzy Wigs Christmas party. Everybody likes a good Christmas party. Do, 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 do. I don't know. That's, that's probably how they used to dance back then. <laughs> anyway, let's get it together. Hey! Scrooge rushed inside. The factory was full of music and merriment. Everyone was enjoying the party. Except young Scrooge who was fretting over the company's finances. All right, let's take a look. All right, we got everybody, all the gang is here. We got a whole bunch of people. You can see Animal is there, right there. Check them out. Oh, uh, we have the Swedish chef, a smorgasbord, a smorgasbord, a smorgasbord. We have all the characters of the Muppets. They're having a good old time. Everyone's having fun, enjoying the Christmas party. Look at these two. They're uh, set the night to music. They're warming things up, but look at Scrooge, right? He can't, can't have a good time. He's worried about the company's finances. I mean, really, Scrooge, on Christmas Eve, okay? Only seven more days in the new year. Just enjoy yourself, right? Have a good time. You know, he's so concerned, and he's such a bean counter and a penny pincher. He can't even enjoy himself. Look at the great time everyone's having. All right. At the party, Scrooge watched as his younger self was introduced to a beautiful girl named Belle. It was love at first sight. But, as Scrooge knew, this was not the only Christmas he had spent with Belle. Time moved forward again. Tears filled Scrooge's eyes as he watched Belle tell his younger self that though he claimed to have loved her, he had chosen money over her one too many times. She couldn't marry him. 
Scrooge begged the spirit to show him no more, crying into his hands. Scrooge sank to the floor. The spirit and the past began to fade. When the Scrooge looked up again, he was alone in his bedroom. Oh, he just couldn't take it. Take a look. First of all, look how beautiful Bow is. And look at Scrooge actually looks happy there. And they look like they're about to have a good time. But over here, take a look. She tells Scrooge, I can't do it. I can't marry you. You have just chosen money over me and love too many times. And Scrooge can't handle it. He's, he's, he can't, look at him. He's crying. He can't believe it. And then it all disappears. The ghost of Christmas past is gone. He wakes up and he's alone all by himself. He can't believe it. You know, thinking back, he loved Belle, but he couldn't. He couldn't take himself away from money, and so Bell wouldn't marry him. And now here he is, years later, in despair, in very deep, deep sadness. Really, really, I kind of feel bad for Scrooge. Let's find out who the next visitor is. Scrooge returned to bed, but he didn't sleep. A short while later, the clock struck two and light and music filled the room. A cheery face appeared in his doorway. I'm the ghost of Christmas present. Come in and know me better, man. <laughs> Scrooge got out of bed. The second spirit was so full of joy and warmth that Scrooge couldn't help but smile. His smile faded as the spirit began to talk about the wonder of Christmas. Scrooge had never understood why people loved Christmas so much. Before this day is over, you shall, said the spirit. <laughs> Check it out. All right. So this is the ghost of Christmas present. Look at that face. Look how happy he is. He looks like my buddy Jimmy. All right. Then over here, Scrooge couldn't help but notice how happy this Christmas ghost was. And, uh, well, look at that spread he's got laid out. And he says, look, I know you don't like Christmas, but after today, you will. Scrooge is really undecided about the whole event. He doesn't know what to think. Let's find out what happens with this ghost. The spirit led Scrooge into the streets of London. Scrooge watched as people greeted each other warmly, sang carols together, and exchanged gifts. For the first time in his life, Scrooge began to understand that Christmas was a time for sharing love. And despite himself, he began to have fun. Hey! Alright, so take a look. We see a bunch of people in the streets of London and they're having a good time singing Christmas carols, enjoying themselves. Look at this. They're sharing, they're caring, they're giving back to each other. And Scrooge can't believe it. He's actually he sees a bunch of people having fun. They're dancing, they're building snowmen. He is really kind of like, wow, I can kind of see what's going on. I can understand why people enjoy Christmas so much and why they're happy around this holiday. Could be having a turn of events here. Next, the spirit brought Scrooge to the house of Bob Cratchit, Scrooge's clerk. Bob was just arriving home from church with his son, a small, frail child named Tiny Tim. Goose! They're cooking goose down there, says Rizzo. <laughs> Scrooge watched as Bob's wife and children rushed to greet him. He could see what the family lacked in money they made up for with love. As the Cratchits sat down to dinner, Bob offered a toast to Scrooge. Miss Cratchit huffed. <coughs> I suppose on a blessed day of Christmas, one must drink to the health of Mr. Scrooge, even though he is stingy, wicked, unfeeling, and badly dressed. Tiny Tim raised his glass. God bless everyone. All right, so <laughs> let's take a look. Scrooge sees right here, he sees Bob Cratchit coming home. He sees him with his frail looking son over here. Rizzo and Gonzo can't believe they're cooking goose. They're excited. They're having fun. And then look at his family. Woo! -hoo! Daddy's here. They're so excited. They may not have a lot of money, but they're very, very loved. And they come rushing towards Bob Cratchit to welcome him home. Over here, we see the family giving a toast. Bob Cratchit goes ahead and gives a toast to his boss. His wife's not too happy. She thinks that he's stingy, he's unpleasant, and he's badly dressed. But hey, why not here on Christmas? 
And then Tiny Tim says it all by saying, God bless everyone. Let's find out what's next. Shame filled Scrooge at the thought of how poorly he had treated Bob. The family had so little, and Tiny Tim was clearly very sick. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will get better. But the spirit could not see the future. The spirit's time was the present, and that time was coming to an end. Scrooge begged the spirit to stay, but the gentle ghost had started to fade. Soon the spirit had vanished, along with the Cratchit's love and home. Scrooge found himself alone in a graveyard. Mist filled the graveyard, and the ghost of Christmas yet to come appeared. The third spirit scared Scrooge, but Scrooge had learned so much from the previous spirits. He was ready to learn more. Lead on, spirit. This is too scary. I don't think I want to see any more. When you're right, you're right. You folks are on your own. We'll meet you at the finale. And <laughs> All right, so let's take a look. We see Scrooge, and he says... To the ghost of Christmas present. I can't believe it. And he's feeling terrible. Look at that. Bob Cratchit. His dedicated hard working clerk. Has, has so little. And you can see Tiny Tim is clearly sick. Scrooge wants to know what happens. And well. The ghost of Christmas present says. I can't tell you. I'm the ghost of Christmas present. Only the future will tell. Boom. There it is. We see it. The ghost of Christmas yet to come in the graveyard. And Scrooge is like, I've already learned so much. Lead the way, show me. And over here, of course, we got Gonzo and Rizzo. And they're like, this is too scary. We're out of here. We'll see you at the finale. We can't take it anymore. Let's find out what the ghost of Christmas yet to come has to say to Scrooge. In the future, Scrooge listened to several street folk merrily discussing a funeral. He watched as the mysterious dead man's belongings were given away. Fear crept into Scrooge's heart. Though Scrooge had heard no name, he felt he had recognized the dead man's things. Next, the spirit brought him to the Cratchit's house. Everything had changed. The once joyful family was now filled with grief. Scrooge understood that the worst had happened. Tiny Tim had not gotten better. Oh no. All right, we can see Scrooge and the ghost right there overseeing these guys. And look how happy they look. They're so cheerful and they're happy. And then they're handing out some stuff. Scrooge recognizes whose stuff that is. Oh no, he doesn't want to believe it, but it's happening. And then they go over to the Cratchit's house and look at poor Mr. and Mrs. Cratchit. Boy, have, things have changed. The once house filled with joy is now filled with utter sadness. Poor, poor Cratchits. Oh no. And Ebenezer Scrooge is really fearful of what's to come next. Oh. Back in the graveyard, Scrooge fearfully asked the spirit whose death had caused the street folk such merriment. Lifting his hand, the spirit pointed to a gravestone. Reluctantly, Scrooge approached the stone and knelt in front of it. With shaking hands, he wiped away the frost. And at the sight of his name, Scrooge burst into tears. <laughs> oh, spirit, he cried. No, please, please. I'm a changed man. Begging for a second chance, Scrooge fell to his knees. Oh, look at this. He just can't believe it. Okay, there it is. Poor Ebenezer Scrooge. He has realized what he's done as he wipes away the mist on the gravestone and sees his name. And he begs the ghost of Christmas yet to come. He begs him, please, please, spirit, I have changed. I have changed, please. Anything. Don't let this be. Don't let this be. I can change more. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Poor Scrooge. What's going on? He... And into his own bed. Scrooge looked up. He was back in his home. I'm home! I'm home! It's a miracle! 
<sighs> hey guys, we're back. Um, did you think it was safe for us to be up here? Scrooge is saved. What could happen now? <sighs> Joyfully, Scrooge threw open his window. You there, boy? What's today? Today, it's uh, Christmas Day. Scrooge couldn't believe it. He had been given a second chance to show the world he was a changed man. Filled with gratitude, he decided to surprise the Cratchits with a delicious Christmas dinner. Yes, 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 Scrooge! Look at this, okay? He wakes up, he's so excited, he's jumping for joy, he's in his bedroom, he realizes he's awake. Oh man, on the windowsill you have Rizzo and Gonzo, and then ba-boom! Scrooge blasts open the window, sends Rizzo and Gonzo flying, yells down to somebody, Hey, what day is it? Well, it's Christmas Day. Yes! Well, then he decides, I'm gonna go right over to the Cratchits and buy them a humongous Christmas dinner. Let's find out what that looks like. Scrooge made his way through the city, giving gifts and smiles to all he passed. His joy was contagious, and he soon found himself followed by a huge crowd of merrymakers. Alright, soon Scrooge arrived at the Cratchit's house. He gestured to the crowd to hide, and knocked on the Cratchit's door. Alright, so take a look. You can see Scrooge, he's flying through the city, he's giving donations, you can see the sack of coins he's got right there. People are starting to gather around, they're getting all kinds of fun gifts, and then he brings them along to the Cratchit's house. But he says, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to knock on this door. You guys, hide over there, hide over there, yeah, that's the way to do it, okay? And then he sternly taps on that Cratchit's door. Let's find out what happens. The Cratchits open their door to find Scrooge scowling on their doorstep. They thought Bob's boss had come to yell at him for missing work on Christmas Day. Miss Cratchit couldn't hold back. She jumped in front of her husband, ready to give Scrooge a piece of her mind. She stopped when she saw the crowd of merry Londoners standing behind Scrooge, their hands full of more presents and food than she or Bob had ever seen. Scrooge stepped forward with an enormous smile on his face. Bob Cratchit, would you and your family care to join us for a little turkey dinner on this fine Christmas day? Wow! Can you believe it? Alright, let's take a look. So, there it is. They open the door and Miss Cratchit's had enough. She's about to give Scrooge a piece of her mind. She thinks that she's going to yell at Scrooge for being mad at Bob for not showing up for work on Christmas Day, and well, ba-boom, out of nowhere, she sees all these famous Londoners. Look at this, we even got Beaker in the house. Yes, Beaker is in the house, and he is pumped, and Bob Cratchit is excited. Look at the smile on his face, and Ebenezer Scrooge says, would you guys mind joining me for a nice turkey dinner, a feast, if you will, this Christmas holiday. And everybody's so happy. It's a glorious moment outside at the Cratchit's house. From that day on, Scrooge became as good a friend, as good a boss, as good as a man as London had ever had. To Tiny Tim, who did get better, Scrooge became like a second father. And it was always said of Scrooge that he knew how to keep Christmas well. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless everyone. Wow! That is awesome. Take a look. Okay, so Scrooge completely changed. He definitely is now like a second father to Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim got better. Everybody's excited. Everybody's happy. Tiny Tim goes ahead and tells everyone, God bless everyone. And that is the end of this epic story. Wow, what an amazing fun book. That book was so much fun to read. I get shivers and chills just reading it. And um, the message and the value that this book teaches is outstanding. And well, it's the Muppets, so how great is that? Hey guys, if you like what I'm doing and you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there. Ring the notifications bell so you're notified when new episodes come out each and every week. If you could, go ahead and give me a like on this video. Drop me down a comment below. Let me know what you liked about this episode. Or if you can suggest another book for me to read for another fun episode, I'd love to hear from you. Wow.
<laughs> that book was awesome. Really enjoyed it. I hope you saw something cool and fun going on here. Well, like how Gonzo and Rizzo stayed along with the whole story and they narrated it. I hope you learned something new and interesting. How Ebenezer Scrooge was a bit of a miser, kind of a grumpy, kind of a money mongrel, if you will, but he was able to go and get a viewing from all the different spirits that changed his way of thinking and he was able to change the way that he treated others and he found the joy of Christmas. But most of all, most of all, I hope you're inspired to read this book yourself, Disney's The Muppet Christmas Carol. Or watch this episode again. Or definitely check out the movie. It's awesome. I'm sure you're gonna love it. I'm sure you're gonna have fun reading it, seeing all the great characters that the Muppets bring to this book. And overall, it's just an amazing story, has tons of value. The message and the morals that are taught in this book are awesome. It's a Christmas classic, and I know you're gonna love it. At this time, I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas. If you don't, Happy Holidays. But to each and every one of you, I hope you have a joyful, peaceful and blessed holiday season and may you have the best year of your life in 2021 thanks again for watching i'm travel man dan aka reading man dan and remember it's a big world out there make sure you see every bit of it